This presentation examines one-way analysis of variance with Minitab. So when is it fair to use a one-way ANOVA? The samples have to come from populations that are approximately normal, but the test is fairly robust, so if you deviate somewhat from normality, you shouldn't be very concerned. Similarly, the populations are supposed to have the same variance, and the test is robust with respect to this requirement as well, especially if the sample sizes are the same or close to the same. Uh, in that case, the variances can indeed be different, and this will continue to be fair. As always, we want our sets of data to be a simple random sample. We cannot make generalizations to the entire population unless our data is randomly chosen. We want our samples to be independent, selected independently, not paired. And there is one category of interest. We're looking at two-way ANOVA a little bit later. So here are our null and alternate hypotheses. H0 is all of the means are the same. So all of the samples come from populations with identical means. If that's not true, then we should find at least one pair of means that are different. Now, one could argue that you could just do a whole bunch of different two-sample t-tests, compare 1 and 2, compare 1 and 3, compare 1 and 4, etc. But that's not really what we're interested in doing. So here's a warning for us to look at, taken from the website at the bottom of the slide. Planned comparisons must be planned before you look at the data. If you look at some data, pick out an interesting comparison, then analyze it as if it were a planned comparison, you will be committing scientific fraud. For example, if you look at the mean arch heights for the nine sports, for a set of nine sports, and you see that cross country has the lowest mean and swimming has the highest mean, then compare just those two means, your p-value will be much too low. This is because there are 36 possible pairwise comparisons, 1 versus 2, 1 versus 3, 1 versus 4, etc. And you would expect 5% of them, or about 1 in 20, to be significant just by random chance. So if you pick the highest mean and the lowest mean and then chose to compare them, again, you are not being fair to the concept of statistics, unless that's what you had chosen to do before you collected your statistics. So again, in this case, with 36 possibilities, you would expect 5% or 1 out of 20, certainly more than 1 out of 26, of those tests to be significant at the P is less than 0.05 level, even if all the data really fit the null hypothesis. So just by random chance, you would expect 1 or 2 to have a low p-value. So there is a good chance that the most extreme comparison in a set of 36 will have a p-value less than 0.05. So if we want to compare multiple means, it's not fair to look at the data and then decide which two we want to compare. So here's our example. We want to look at the mean volumes of 12-ounce cans of soda. So what do we have here? We have four different types of soda pop that's measured, Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, Pepsi, and Diet Pepsi. All of the cans say 12 ounces. Of course, no can is exactly 12 ounces, 12.000000 forever. So we're going to measure these cans of soda pop, and we're going to see if their means all could have come from populations that are the same, or might we find a pair of means that are different. And to answer this question, we're going to go to Minitab. So there's our data. Coke regular volume, Coke diet volume, Pepsi regular volume, and Pepsi diet volume. This data is taken from Elementary Statistics by Mario Triola. And if we look at all of the data, we will see that there are a total of 36 cans in each of the categories. So we have, apparently have three 12 packs, 36 cans in each of the categories. We want to compare all of them. And we're going to come up here, and the command that we use is AOVO. -O. What does that stand for? Analysis of variance one way, AOVO. -O. We have data in C1 through C4. And we will see what that output is going to look like. And then we'll analyze what it means. So we will remove the picture for now. And we'll take a look at what we have. So beginning one way ANOVA, Coke regular volume, Coke diet volume, Pepsi regular volume, Pepsi diet volume. Our F statistic that we're interested in here is 9.43. And our P value that we're interested in is 0. So if the P value is small, 
we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Now looking at all these numbers, we have 36 Coke regulars with a mean of 12.1944, Coke diet 12.2444, Pepsi regular 12.2917, and Pepsi diet 12.2. Now these numbers all seem very close to each other, so why would we have gotten the p-value of basically zero? It's because the standard deviations are so small. Now, it wouldn't be fair to take our highest and our lowest, so our highest here would be Coke Diet's volume, and the lowest would be Coke Regular volume, and then compare those two, because that's not what we had started out to look for. We just were wondering if it was always 12 ounces. Now, what is also interesting is looking at the confidence intervals, and if we look at the confidence intervals, what do we see? Well, actually, Pepsi Regular volume is the highest number, because we can see Pepsi Regular volume has the highest mean, and the lowest one is going to be Coke regular volume. But you can see Coke regular and Pepsi diet are pretty similar. So we have 95% confidence intervals for the mean. Again, they're pooling the standard deviations in this case. And does it appear that those confidence intervals are all essentially the same? And certainly looking at the Pepsis, they don't overlap at all. So that is at least some indication to us where we might have difficulty in terms of saying that the means are the same. Okay, the irrelevant information from Minitab was the F statistic was 9.43 and the p-value was 0, 0.000. And that, of course, is a small p-value, so if it's a small p-value, reject H0. Now, what did H0 say? H0 said that the four types of soda pop came from populations where the means were all the same. Well, that's not the case. We get a small p-value. We've got to say that we have sufficient evidence to conclude that the samples come from populations where at least two of the means are different. The population means are not all the same. Okay, our next data set looks at average grade point averages for students who do not work, for students who work fewer than 10 hours a week, and for students who work more than 10 hours a week. And these are 11th grade high school students and they are using a 12-point scale for grade point averages. A plus is 12, A is 11, A minus is 10, etc. So let's take a quick look at the data. So these are not equal size data sets. You will notice more than 10 ended at 17, under 10 ended at 20 items, and does not work is 36. And again, we are assuming these are random samples representatives of entire populations. Now we want to go ahead and do our analysis of variance, AOV, one way, and then our data is in C1 through C3. And what will that give us? And again, we will get rid of the pictures, not terribly concerned about that. And we'll take a look at our output. So our F statistic here is 0.05. That is a very small F statistic. Our P value is 0.949. That's a very large P value. In the case of a very large P value, we know our conclusion is failed to reject H0. Now, let's again take a look at our confidence intervals. Notice all of these confidence intervals overlap. Notice the means are remarkably close. Not working. The average grade point average was 9.728. Under 10 hours, 9.861, and more than 10 hours, 9.717. So if that's the case, we do not see a very large effect here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take our relevant information, namely our F statistic and our p-value, and state our conclusion. So again, our relevant information, the F is 0 0.05, the p-value is 0 0.949, our H0 is that mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3, which means that the average GPA for the non-workers was the same as the average GPA for the under 10 hours a week workers was the same as the average GPA for the over 10 hours a week. HA is that at least one pair would have been different. Well, this time we have a large p-value. So we'll go ahead and change that. Since the p-value is large, we fail to reject H0. Notice. 0.949 is about as large as we can get. What will our conclusion be? We're going to say we do not have sufficient evidence to conclude that the samples come from populations where at least two of the means are different. 
the population means may have all been the same. That does not mean we're saying they are the same. That does not mean we're saying we have evidence that they're the same. We're just allowing that as a possibility. That's why I am saying here we cannot be sure. So the average GPAs may have been the same for all three groups. And that will conclude this presentation.